This week on Techopia Live, we're talking to SmartCone CEO Jason Lee about a new task force that he's building to help create solutions to address the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, I want to let you know up front that there were some technical difficulties with this episode, only on my end, though, so you might see a bit of lag or lower video quality from me, but Jason Lee turned out just great, and we wanted to make sure that you still saw this great episode, so we hope you enjoy it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Techopia Live. I'm your host, Craig Lord, the editor here at Techopia. We are still remote. We are still socially isolating, uh, as it were, from the COVID-19 pandemic. Hope you're staying safe and healthy out there. But we didn't want to stop our content, our videos, and interviews with local Ottawa entrepreneurs. Because this week, we're talking to some of the entrepreneurs, some of the, uh, the makers in the community that are making a difference uh, in the pandemic. I want to introduce my guest for this week, uh, Mr. Jason Lee from SmartCone. Uh, Jason, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you very much, Craig, for having us here. And uh, we're happy to be uh, part of it and uh, doing what we can for the, uh, the current COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the pandemic has produced a lot of interesting problems that we've never faced before in in uh, our day to day lives. The the social distancing aspect of this is, is one of the main things trying to prevent the stem, the, the spread of germs, that kind of stuff. And smart cone has actually uh, like you usually work in like IOT devices, that kind of stuff. But you've come out with a new solution that is kind of a physical uh, aid to this crisis. Can you explain and maybe show off a little bit? What is this, this product that you brought to market now? Sure. For uh, everybody watching here, this we call the uh, it's a it's a multi tool for no touch. And we're still kind of playing with names. My wife likes to call it the COVID claw. So we're still mm -hmm. trying to figure out the right name to call it. But basically, it's a tool that you can hold in your hand that gives you the ability to interact with things like use the little nub at the end here to interact with an ATM machine or elevator buttons or whatever it may be. And we're putting a little active tip on here so you can also interact with touch screens and a little hook so that you can open doors or you know pick up things or open car doors and so on and so forth. And our goal there is to, uh, to be able to give people a way to interact socially without touching anything as the hands are the way to cross contaminate. So this gives you a way to, to have one single point of touch and then clean it with a cloth and, and away you go to the next place. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like it because you everybody has uh, been presented with exactly these problems uh, in, in the past week. I, I went to the bank and they gave me a little Q-tip to press the pins on, on, the, on the pin machine. And it was difficult, it was awkward. I think everybody's kind of fumbling through this right now and it's very easy to see how uh, a claw like that, a COVID claw or whatever you wanna call it, could uh, could help people right now. Um, yeah. what, I'm, what I'm curious about though, uh, when it comes to the smart cone perspective is that this isn't your usual line of business. Usually the smart cone technology is about uh, edge computing and, and the internet of things and, and alerting people, uh, say on a, on a construction site or, or uh, in, in a dangerous scenario, okay, get out of here, detect this. Uh, it's, it's very high tech stuff and this feels like a low tech uh, solution, uh, but useful nonetheless. How did smart cone actually come about saying, okay, well, let's put our technology or our brains to use uh, for this pandemic with the, the claw here? Well, you know, it, it really comes down to budget, you know, uh, because we deal in uh, in markets where, like you've already kind of described, where governments and uh, people in control have to respond to so many different conflicting use cases at the same time. And there's often only one pot of money. And typically what happens is solution providers wait in line to get access to that to that money. So what we thought we would do is we'd create a little a little device that you know sells for 10 bucks and then we would use part of the money we raised from that 10 bucks to put towards helping people deliver solutions to where it's needed the most. So it was really a fundraising exercise for us to use our, our uh, innovation, our design to come up. We patented it as well. So we will plan on having an IoT insert that goes in the side pocket here because like you said, we are IoT. But for now, we're using it as a way to uh, to raise funding so we can give it to those who need it to help um, increase the speed to deal with COVID-19 issues. And that's why we called it 19 Task Force by Smartcone. So the task force uses this to raise money, to redirect the money, 
to, to help deliver solutions to those who need it most while the governments are, are doing their best and they're doing a great job to solve, uh, to solve problems. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really interesting to talk about how quickly those markets are changing and how companies uh, like SmartCone are adapting to to address where the needs are arising because it is it is across the board being changed. And uh, you mentioned that task force, uh, which I want to get to in just a moment. But before we do, I want to take a quick moment and talk about actually the University of Ottawa and the Faculty of Engineering. It's one of the supporters of Techopia Live, but they are also, uh, we're seeing, using some of their technologies, 3D printers, that kind of stuff for, for personal protective equipment, which we need in this crisis right now. Um, in general though, even beyond just the COVID-19 situation, there's an opportunity for local companies to solve technical challenges through research partnerships at the University of Ottawa. The school's researchers are focused on applying their expertise tackling real world problems, and they are keen to work with businesses to bring these solutions to market. The collaborations can unlock funding opportunities as well as lead to grants for hiring PhD students. These companies can use labs, specific equipment, I mentioned 3D printers, and gain access to world leading researchers. So if I what I've spoken about uh, speaks to you, uh, learn more about those opportunities available to local firms at engineering.uottawa. Uh, coming back in though, Jason, uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about the task force specifically and how people can get involved. Uh, what are the opportunities here for, for people to collaborate with SmartCone? Well, I'm telling you that university thing you just talked about right there, I emailed my people uh, to link into that. That sounds like a great opportunity. So thanks for that. Great um, plug. <laughs> you know, in, the tech, in the technology world, you know, people have learned how to rapidly integrate solutions using APIs and common interfaces and so on. So we created the task force in a way to rally together uh, anybody and everybody who's got a solution that they think that they can help to come part of a larger delivery. And we wanted to expedite that. So we opened up the, the 19 task force for companies around the world. We're working with companies like I, uh, Microsoft, et cetera, IBM, Nokia, Enterprise, a whole bunch of other companies have, have brought their resources together so that we can go help address uh, problem statements everywhere. And that's really what the 19 task force is about, is leveraging technologies and services that we can all rally together quickly and then deliver that to where it's needed most. And again, that comes back to helping fund it with this tool so that uh, people are contributing some volunteer for sure. But then we also plan on using the revenue that we get from things to help pay uh, for some of the services as well. But the 19 task force is about being able to coordinate together to respond fast so we can help everyone in this crisis. Mm -hmm. And if people want to join the task force, is that uh, on LinkedIn that you're gathering that? Yeah, there's just two things on LinkedIn. We have a group called the uh, the 19 Task Force by SmartCon. And so you can absolutely reach out on LinkedIn there. We also established our own website, which is 19taskforce.com, where we'll be posting uh, our uh, projects that we have going on. Also, how much money we've raised and, and all those and what it's being used for. So it's like a dashboard what's happening with the task force. That's 19taskforce.com. All right. Uh, well, that's perfect, Jason. Uh, like I said, really interesting applications. The smart cone is, is bringing to market to address a, a whole host of needs right now in the pandemic. So uh, I think I, a lot of interested companies might be looking for exactly this kind of uh, opportunity to, to give back and contribute a bit. So thanks so much for coming on the show this week and, and telling us all about it. Thank you very much, Craig. And uh, stay safe and everybody else stay safe out there too. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Jason. Before I let everyone else go, I want to take a quick moment and thank some of our sponsors without whom Techopia Live would not be possible. I want to start with Number Crunch, offering virtual CFO services for SaaS firms. There's Pearlie Robertson, Hill McDougall, a leader in business and tech law. There's TD Bank, offering specialized programs for tech firms. There's Stratford Managers, offering services to help you scale up your tech venture. Of course, we talked about the University of Ottawa Faculty of Engineering. They're creating the next generation of technical talent.
Now, Techopia Live is not just this fantastic show. We're also available online with daily articles covering Ottawa's tech scene. You can find us on obj.ca slash techopia and on social, on Facebook and Twitter at techopia OTT. And if you're watching us on YouTube, please leave us a like and a comment and subscribe to see more of our weekly tech interviews. Apart from that, just want to thank you very much for joining us for this week's episode of Techopia Live. We'll be back next week with another episode and hope to see you then.